when I think about it, I feel like a very bad dream. I had a very bad dream that day. I thought it was ice that stung me in the eye, but then everyone started shouting out acid and then there was a strong burning smell. At that moment, I knew instantly it was acid. There was no mistaking. The skin felt incredibly dry. It was as though my face was trying to get away from itself. With acid attacks on the rise, we spent time with four victims to find out how they're rebuilding their lives after such a horrific crime. I was having the best night. It was really good. I was in a club. I was there with a few of my friends. Me and my friend walked off to just have a quick chat and all of a sudden, it was acid. I was just coming from that way and I stopped here and suddenly I had the sound of water and look at left and I saw there is a bike with two boys with a mask on. They're trying to attack me again. And about four, four o'clock in the afternoon, I, I saw a red van come down, come down the road. About five minutes later, I had a knock at my door. And I opened my front door and instantly received a beaker of sulfuric acid to the face. I was walking toward Stratford bus station. Two men approached me. One of them started to press me for money. I said, well, I don't have any. And I started to walk away. I turned round because I didn't want him. I didn't know if he was you know, coming after me or... And at that point, he splashed acid in my face. First day, I didn't realise that's acid. I thought that's water. As soon as it's getting dry and it's getting more worse, and then I realised that's acid. My son could have quite easily been in my arms. And if he had got hit, he would have died. I almost died. He definitely would have died. I've never been through anything like that ever, and I wish and I hope I never go through anything like that again. It was very scary. Never been attacked, never get scared, but recently I'm really scared to go to work and, you know. Acid attacks are on the rise. Although relatively small in comparison to knife crime, over the past few years there has been a change in the way acid is being used in Britain. The numbers have certainly increased. We, uh, we did some research a few years ago and we looked at all of our chemical assaults from one to two per year on average. We've see, we admitted 20 cases last year and we have seen uh, more than that already this year. We've become increasingly alarmed by the number of attacks um, reported here in the UK. In 2016, there were over 500 recorded attacks. This means that per capita, the UK certainly has one of the highest records of acid attacks globally. It used to be thought of as a woman's crime where a woman had perhaps been jilted at the altar, but now we see acid or throwing acid has been adopted by urban street gangs. Some of them are not gang related, some of them just genuinely are robberies where the acid is the weapon and it's not the primary use, it's there to scare, there to frighten. You can see the water just splashing into someone's face and their skin is burning, you can see the smoke. I didn't really look too hard, I just see it and move my head. So I'm on my way to go and see Dr. Esho with my mum. The first time I met Dr. Esho is when I went on a show and he helped me with all my acid scars, which I no longer have. They was all on my face here, like chicken pot scars on my forehead. I had a few under my eye and then also on the top of my head. He worked wonders on it and done an amazing job. Dr. Esho brought my mum with me. Oh my God, how are you? I'm good, how are you? And this is mum. Uh, Thanks very much, Dr. Isha. Oh, it's amazing. She looks amazing. You can't even see her anymore. That's amazing. I knew you were going to heal very fast, but I did not expect you to heal this fast. In the Mangal nightclub incident in April, 20 people were sprayed with acid. That's the largest number of victims ever reported from a single attack. I'd heard about the event that had happened at the nightclub, and I just said a tweet saying that, you know, anyone that's injured or been injured and saw 
medical attention but is needing further help um, just to get in contact. You did the right things and I think that's probably part of the process. When everyone got evacuated from the building, I was standing outside a pub and obviously there was a few people there that I knew. They see me, they was watering me down, but then they took the phone out of my bag to ring my mum because I was kind of screaming, ring my mum. I don't know how I got there, but yeah, I got there within down. like 10, 15 minutes. You literally shot there, yeah. It was, it was mad, but I got there and she was just crying and screaming, mum, mum. And... She took me back home, got me in the shower, showered me down. And then I went to uh, A&E the next day. I won't go to a club ever again. Or, yeah, with loads of, somewhere there's loads of people in. I couldn't do it. As a, as a delivery driver, I've been delivering a lot of places, a lot of places in London. And I haven't been scared like that before. In July, Jabed was the first of five victims to be attacked with acid in a 90-minute spree across North and East London. His helmet prevented worse injuries and his moped was then stolen by the attackers. Delivery drivers, led by Jabed, are campaigning for more protection from future thefts. There are a lot of drivers leaving their jobs because they are scared. No one giving support and, um, well, there isn't enough police on the street to give us a support. What we see that there is, a, there is an increase of acid attacks, you know, and especially the moped uh, gangs, you know, they, they have increased their activity and we are the victim, you know. We have an upcoming demonstration on 21st, so we're just um, having a small meeting about it. Thank you everyone for coming today. Crime still on the road, police not chasing them. Someone need to force them to chase them. You are the guys who came very, very on time for me. Before my family comes, you guys was there to put water on me. So I, I won't forget that. We are uh, normal workers, normal uh, hardworking people. Who's gonna secure us? This is something, something different happening in London. And this is our city. And we're not gonna tolerate anything like that. A study carried out by the Mid-Essex Hospital revealed that roughly a quarter of attacks are recorded as unprovoked. We had a couple of cases where people were attacked randomly you know, while getting the shopping out of their cars and uh, returning home from work. You know, these were incidences where it, you can't really put a, a reason behind it. Peter has asked to remain anonymous as he doesn't want to be known as just a victim of an acid attack. The acid was thrown on the left side of my face I knew within about five seconds that this was definitely something that should not be on my skin. But most recently I'd heard about the attack in the, the nightclub in Dalston. I was aware that it was something that, that happened, but it didn't, it always felt very distant. You know, I'd never seen the guy in my life, I'd never had any involvement with anything like this. They needed somebody to hit and it happened to be me. One friend of mine said that my scarves were magnificent. They were a story of survival, which I thought was rather sweet, but I'd rather they weren't there. In Cornwall, Andreas was also a victim of an unprovoked attack in a case of mistaken identity. That first 24 hours, obviously, for, for, for everyone involved, were, were traumatic. When the ambulance came, I didn't really think it was that bad. And then they said, we've really got to go now because your husband's not going to make it. And I just, I just sort of froze. I was like, oh gosh, what? The doctor sat my wife and my mum down and told them to prepare for the worst because they didn't think I was going to make it through the night. Luckily I did. I wake up five days later in intensive care unit in Morriston. The moment I wake up, I always knew I'd be fine. There was never this doubt in my mind. I know, I know now that it's obviously naive and potentially rather stupid. Obviously, when you wake up in an ICU, you are intubated. You're, you've got tubes coming out of everywhere. I signalled for a pad of paper so I could com communicate. The first thing I wrote down was who would do this to me of which obviously no one at the time knew, but they explained that David Phillips had been arrested. They asked if they could get me anything, and my response was a pint of cider. It was probably a reflection of my, my mindset in de dealing with things throughout, throughout the whole ordeal. Cornish boy. I wouldn't have been able to do it like him. 
I don't think a lot of people would have. He just dealt with it incredibly and just picked himself up and got on with it and yeah, amazing. I sometimes forget that he's an acid victim. <laughs> when I woke up I couldn't see and I had all like big scabs all over my face. It, I just, it was horrible. Just waking up thinking, is this gonna go? Or what, when the scab comes off, what are they gonna turn into? I didn't feel myself. I'm fine now, I'm I know, I know, but I think where you have to be so strong for all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, it, that's, it must be great if you having to be, because you always have to put on a brave face for me. Oh. That's not even the size of my fingernail. No. I'm very happy, let's see. Yeah, you are a star student. But it's just the internal scars as well from mm. something like that happens, the fear that she's yeah. going through now. She's really anxious everywhere she goes. So they're things that she's just gonna have to rebuild again and yeah. I hope with time that she can do that. But confidence wise, what you've done is amazing, you know. You know, the situation you described is where you lose control. So to be able to get through that bit and then have a treatment which then, you know, brings back and starts to bring back what you were prior, you know, I think yeah. that's key. It has been an emotional bit of a roller coaster as well. So I just hope she's getting through it now. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the time I didn't realise I was gonna have any treatment. I didn't or anything. I was been as lucky to get that treatment. So I thought I was going to end up being with this guy's forever. The fact that I've got nothing now, it's so good. I know the pain and I don't want anybody to suffer like that. This is what I'm doing. Otherwise I would have sit down, get back to work and do whatever I, um, I, I was supposed to do. I live in London, this is my home city. In future generation, like more, my daughter is going to grow, grow up here. She, didn't, she shouldn't get scared of it. She saw me in ambulance and she was really scared. She doesn't know what happened, but uh, she was scared. I get a lot of stress. My doctor said it could be um, these things, um, you're, you're, you're not mentally fit or something. It's going to be okay. This is what I think as well, I, I might be okay. Jabed attended a preliminary hearing in which his alleged attacker pleaded not guilty. The trial will be held in January next year. So the story that I've told myself is that this was some sort of a gang initiation. I just think that this was something that he had to do to show allegiance to somebody. There was a, a guy who was just watching the whole thing, didn't get involved, didn't see his face. He sort of wandered around on the outskirts of the whole thing and just, just to make sure that it happened. I was the only one there. I th it, could, it was just a roll of the dice, I think. I just happened to be a convenient target. It's difficult to establish just how many of these attacks are gang related, as the police, the NHS and academics each have their own method of recording an acid attack. We've seen over 2,000 attacks in London alone since 2010 and part of the increase is because street gangs have now adopted it as part of their repertoire. In my experience uh, acid is, is not prevalent use as a weapon uh, for young people in gangs. People that we're working with are still carrying knives for protection and not acid. One thing I do know is that urban street gangs are way ahead of us. They've been considering this for some time and they've been engaging with this now for some time. So in terms of the media coverage, you're coming to this a little bit late. These boys are ahead of you. I'm always frustrated when anything is just linked to young people in gangs. I think it sensationalises gang membership anyway and there's a lot of reasons why young people go into gangs. It isn't all glamorous. It's not a life choice to be in a gang. Gage is an ex-gang member who's witnessed acid being used in gangs. He says he has never thrown or carried acid. You know, it's an easy weapon, it's easy to hold, you can have it in, you can have it in your pocket, it's easy and it does the damage. That's the reason why gangs will have that kind of thing on them. In my younger days, the people I was around, getting acid was like a game. They would get acid and when you got it, then the next move is they want to be excited to use it now. You use a knife, you, you might get stopped and searched and get caught with that before you get to use it. 
and get a custodial sentence. You can be stopped and searched with acid in your Lucasade bottle and they wouldn't even detect it. What we have to realise is that these young men and women are, as ridiculous as it sounds, are in a war. And if you think about a war, uh, the objective of a war is to win. Winning to them is surviving. So if you hear that acid is taking, the, taking place within your area, how do you protect yourself? Not with a knife, carrying acid. And that, that's what's happening on the streets of London. From very early on, me, me and Pierre made the decision that my son Theo should, shouldn't be near the hospital at all. So I didn't see him for close to three months. And that was my biggest fear. How, how would he be with me? How would he react to seeing me? My wife Pierre got him out of the car and I went up to him and he looked at me and he just grabbed Pierre and my heart sank. I was holding him and Theo just held on to me. But then when I started talking and he recognised my voice, he knew it was me. And the second he knew it was me, he just stuck his arms out to me and gave me the biggest hug in the world. It was just a really emotional moment. Yeah, it was really good. It's nice that he just wasn't worried about anything. It's impacted every aspect of my life. From the moment I've woken up, every morning, it takes me about half an hour to gain my sight. I've lost my eyelids three times now from the contraction of my scars. And sadly, not having eyelids is, was one of the reasons why, or I guess the, the ultimate reason why I went completely blind in my left eye because they couldn't get the eyes to shut um, and infection took over. David Phillips was sentenced to life imprisonment for his attack on Andreas. In five years' time, he could be released. Five years from now, he'll be out in the streets. And in five years from now, I will certainly be still having full facial reconstructive surgeries. I will certainly be without sights. And I will be wearing scars to the grave. So if it doesn't seem right that he'll be out within five years. People that spray acid, they should get punished a hundred times worse because they're ruining people's lives. There's no punishment that I can think of that would satisfy me where I think, yeah, you know what, that's about equal to what you did to me. I've defended a number of acid attack cases over the years. It's becoming more part of what my work involves. You will have a variety of motives behind it, so you will never get the same answer twice from anyone. can't profile someone who will throw acid. It is by its very definition an easily accessible weapon. Because it's so easy to obtain, it's likely that anyone who has a criminal intent or wants to cause someone harm will, be, will want to use it or may think about using it. There is no excuse for throwing acid at anyone, whether it's provoked or unprovoked. The problem that arises is that there may be reasons for it, and so you have to analyse those reasons why someone may do it. That doesn't mean that, that that's an apologist approach, it simply is a reality that there are lots of reasons why people commit crimes of any type. And the victims, of course, feel a sense of injustice. Nothing will bring back a person's face once it's scarred. In the UK, 75% of acid attacks are unreported. And of those that are reported, only a quarter lead to charges. The criminal justice system isn't about sending everyone away to prison. It's about understanding why things happen. I don't think we can ever um, uh, appreciate the, the impact of a, of a corrosive substance injury to the individual. The psychological impact to that person, the meaning to the individual, uh, will remain with them for the rest of their life. Come on, man. What have you been doing? Going out was always me, me and my friends, we love it. So my friends are a bit sad that I don't really go out anymore. They don't even ask me anymore because I just go and tell them no. I just didn't think it had affected me like that. But yeah, it obviously did. To be honest, not so for me, much for me as well, but also for my mum and my family, because I, my mum was really upset when it all happened to me. If I went to a festival or if I went out to a club, she wouldn't be able to sleep. I'm now old, going on double dates and <laughs> brunching. This is our city, this is our home. This is our job to um, be active about it. And if you see anything, we let, um, we need to protest against it, we need to call police, we need to, um, you know, help each other. Hundreds of thousands of people go through Stratford every day. 
And there is this irrational part of me that thinks, am I going to run into this guy again? I'm sure I will go back. I can't have that little corner of the world which is off limit, which has been taken off limits to me. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that I, that I will go back there at some point. It being absolutely disruptive to her world, um, my, my son has to spend long periods of time away from me um, and still does reg regularly now. But we're a strong family. We, we, we keep together, we, we work together, we, we help each other out. There was a time where we just didn't, we were just sat around, we just didn't think it would get any better. I know it seems all positive now, but the best thing um, is just time and then you just get your life back, you do. In July, there was a debate in Parliament about how to respond to the rapid rise in acid attacks. The government is now reviewing the law.